gentlemen, the council is open. Gentlemen, I've called you here to find out why a simple request for taxes causes such unpriestly clutter warning. My lord. We must come to an understanding about who rules this kingdom. The church? My lord, I wish to ask. Just a moment, Archbishop. The church or me? There are many troublesome issues between us which call for a reckoning. Amongst other abuses is the claim you make of judging your clergy accused of civil crimes in your own ecclesiastical courts. I warn you, there can be only one justice in this country, and that is the king's. But before we quarrel, here is some happy news. I have decided to revive the office of Chancellor of England, Keeper of the Lion's Seal, and entrust it to our loyal servant, Thomas Beckett. Yes, my little Saxon. My lord. Well, for once, I've taken you by surprise. My lord, this is a stupendous honor for which I may not be worthy. I'm uh, inexperienced in these matters and frivolous by nature. Rubbish. You know more than all of us put together. He's read books, you know. It's amazing. He's drunk and wenched his way through London, but he's thinking all the time, aren't you, Thomas? He'll checkmate the lot of you! Even your Archbishop. I never did anything without your advice. No one knew it. Now everyone will. That's all. There. That's the great seal of England. Don't lose it. Without the seal, there's no more England. And we'll all have to pack up and go back to Normandy. May I crave leave to greet our young and learned friend? For I noticed him when he was first made Archdeacon. Thank you, Archbishop. But don't rely too much on Beckett to play your game. He's my man. I'd forgotten you were an archdeacon, Thomas. So had I, my prince. Now to business. The law demands that every landowner send soldiers to give me service or pay a tax in silver. Is that correct? I have heard so, my lord. We are about to cross the channel to force Louis of France to return the Norman towns he has taken from us. I have received neither soldiers nor silver from you gentlemen for this war. But surely one must distinguish between the individual landowner and God's church. The law doesn't distinguish. But this has never been spoken of before. I've never been this poor before. Now I've made up my mind and I'm passing round the plate. Just drop in the money. Ooh, my backside's sore. They're all count your blessings, sire. Uh. Don't know about you, Thomas, but I'm starving. Have them bring us something to eat. A layman who shirks his duty and fails to supply his king with arms should pay the tax. Nobody will question that. <laughs> Least of all the clergy. On the other hand, a priest's duty is to assist his king with his prayers for godliness and peace. He cannot maintain men at arms without violating the very essence of that sacred function. Therefore, he cannot be held liable for the tax. Your priests fought well enough in the days of the conquest when there was booty to be had. Sword in fist, ramps in the saddle, death to the Saxon scum, it's God's will, it's God's will. Those violent days are over. The priest is back in his sanctuary. It is peacetime now. But not for long. Pay up. I don't intend to budge. Come on, Chancellor, say something. Has your new title made you tongue-tied? May I respectfully draw to my Lord Archbishop's attention one small point? Respectfully, but firmly. Your Chancellor now. England is a ship. The king is the captain of the ship. That's neat. I like that. My Lord Chancellor, in point of fact, there is also a saying, the captain is sole master after God. After God! Nobody's questioning God's authority, Archbishop. Well, certainly God protects the ship by inspiring the captain, but I've never heard that he determines the wages of the crew nor instructs the paymaster in his duties. God has more important business. Our young deacon's ambition has carried him away from the church. But he cannot have forgotten that what is important is revealed to man only through his church, in the person of our Holy Father in Rome, his bishops and his priests. Or does the Chancellor think otherwise? True, there is a priest on board every ship. He gives God's blessings. 
but neither God nor the church ask him to take the wheel from the helmsman. My Reverend Lord, the Bishop of London, who I understand is the son of a sailor, surely cannot have forgotten that. <laughs> I will not allow personal insinuation to compromise the integrity and honour of the church. Please, Bishop, no long words. All that's at stake here is its money. I need money to fight the French. Will the church give it to me? Yes or no? My Lord, your illustrious ancestor, William the Conqueror, granted these tax exemptions to the church. May he rest in peace. Where he is now, he doesn't need money. I'm still on earth, and I do! This is not primarily a question of money, Your Highness. This is a question of principle. I need troops, Bishop! I sent for 3,000 Swiss to help me fight the King of France. And no one has ever paid the Swiss with principles. My Lord Chancellor, it is pointless to continue this discussion. The law has given us the means of coercion. We will use it. You! You owe everything to Holy Mother Church. Would you dare plunge a dagger into her bosom? My Lord and King, who rules by the grace of God, has given me his seal with the three lions to protect. My mother is England now. Traitor! Saxon! My reverend friend, I strongly suggest that you respect my chancellor, or else I'll call my guard. Ah, here they are now. Oh, no. It's only my snack. Now, gentlemen, if you will excuse me. At this hour in the morning, I need sustenance, or else I tend to feel weak. And a king must never weaken. I'm sure you will agree. I'll have it in my chapel. Then I can pray directly afterwards. Come on, Thomas, keep me company. He means it's time for the hunt. Not until we have eaten, my dear Bishop. <laughs> <laughs>